Before we start, if you could follow, like, and subscribe, that would be, be extremely appreciated. And today's daily coding challenge is this. We've got this formula from Fermat, it's an approximation, and it says that the following formula yields the correct decimal digits of pi to 42 billion digits. So I'm going to use Python to try and examine this to show if indeed it is correct or incorrect. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a block of code and I'm going to need to import the math module and the reason I'm going to need to import the math module is because I'm going to be working with exponents and it might be a little bit clearer just to use the math.e for exponents and also the power function because we're raising e to the power of n squared so a number to another power and then divided by 10 to another power again 10 square 10 to the power of 10 and we're doing all of this and uh, and dividing this entire sum by 10 to the power of five, so another power, and then we are squaring that, and apparently that's approximately equal to pi. So we're going to attempt to show this in Python. Python's a great language for doing this. It really shows its simplicity in, in terms of how we can achieve a, a result, at least or at least inspect a result. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is, I guess, set a variable, because there's no such thing as infinity for us in terms of computational numbers but what we could do is say infinity just to start with is 1 million which is a big enough number so this summation here goes from minus infinity to plus infinity but let's just assume that minus 1 million to plus 1 million accounts for a, a good degree of uh, of the number of decimal places that would be created in the accuracy and the next thing that we're going to do is a for loop of some kind. So we're going to do for i in range, but we'll just change our i variable to n just so that we are actually consistent with this n over here. So now this n and this sum from n equals minus infinity rep is replicated with this n variable over here. So we've got that in place, which is very nice. And... <clears throat> We're also going to, there's a whole variety of ways that we can do this, post your comments uh, for, for alternatives, but I'm going to set an initial counting variable equals to zero. We could do list comprehensions and other things, but the reason that I'm going to do this is because I'm going to be incrementing the value of V because that's probably a more suitable thing to do. Now we're going to go from minus infinity to positive infinity, so that's what our infinity how about that? that so that's what our loop actually does again this piece over here is the positive infinity which is this one and if i just do that in yellow this piece over here is the negative infinity thing so that's one that is over there in the for loop so that's just describing that the next thing is to say that v is going to be incremented because we're starting at the lowest value of infinity so v is incremented by and then math so we started at zero and then we're going to keep on totting up and up and up until we get to our final value because that's what a summation does that's what this summation over here actually means so let's do this totting up so math math Dot. And then we're going to do the first exponent here. So we'll do exp and we see that here that it says return e raised to the power of x. So that's perfect. So everything in the brackets now, everything in these brackets over here are going to be represented by this power over here. Now that's um, an ugly looking number, but we can deal with it sequentially with all of its different components. So the first thing that we've got is a negative of something that goes in there and i'm going to use the power function now here in python and again this just raises a number so a base to a, a, a power we could also we, we don't have to use that we could do say for example 10 squared that would be fine and n squared would be fine but let's just use this power function just for a bit of clarity because we've got one power function here and another power function here so it just keeps it a little bit of cleanliness we don't have to do that so n squared 
And then we're going to divide, so we've dealt with the minus n squared, but that is all over 10 to the power of 10. So just for the purpose of consistency, although I could do 10 to the power of 10 like that, I'm just going to change it to power of 10 and we're going to raise it to the power of 10 just like that so now we've dealt so far with everything in this exponent over here so again i'll it's like underscore it in red that's our component here and it's all dealt with over here and we've done our summation from n equals infinity positive infinity to negative infinity that's inside of this range here so we've done the complete sum and we've done that by doing this incrementing operator on it the next thing we've got to do is take this whole number the entire answer and divide it by 10 to the power of 5 so we will just say outside of the loop because we've now finished our loop we've done the crunch the number crunching part of it we will just say that v is equal to v over, and then again, just for consistency, power of, and we're going to do 10 to the power of 5. And that's going to have dealt with this 1 over 10 to the 5 multiplied by all of this, which we've assigned to the variable v over there. And finally, we are going to square it. We could do all this in one line of code. So, for example, we could just square everything like this. But, again, just because we are using power for the purpose of consistency, we will say that V equals power of V squared. So that's nice and complete, and that's everything here. And that actually should be the computation for pi. So let's just do this and print out V and see what it actually looks like. We're expecting 3.14159 something or other. And when we run this, it takes a second to run and we do get 3.14159926 and so forth. Now, the claim is that this is accurate to 42 billion digits. Now, if we just remember this number, there's different ways of doing this. But if we actually just remember this number over here, for example, we can let let's just change our accuracy now and this will be a bit slower because we're doing 10 million loops and this is oh lot this is um o of n so if it took about one second to run to do 10 million it's going to take about 10 seconds to run so i'll control return it just to investigate to see if we get any better accuracy or not we want seven seconds eight nine and ten it'll probably go on a tiny bit more maybe to 15. there we go 12 seconds we're done and what we see is we don't enhance the accuracy anymore so we can't like without in doing like certain tricks on python with our natural python we've come to the end of the accuracy and these two numbers are the same for this was for one million this was for one million and the next one down below was for 10 million over here 10 million so no extra accuracy gain by doing this but one thing that we can do is we can do a over here we'll just do a math because it's already in our module math.py we can jump straight to this do we need to like perform this in this set of uh, commands or, or do we could we could put it into a function then would we need to like produce this function or should we just go to straight straight away to math.py and do like a side by side comparison if that makes sense so we print out math.py and we get this number over here and what you're going to notice actually is that this claim is not correct because if i do put this math.py maybe I'll put it i will put it directly underneath so that we can actually see it but we can see here at this digit, and this is digit, I think it's number 11, but let's count them through. But this is the first decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 decimals are good, and the 12th decimal actually on math.py, assuming that that's correct, and I, and I will assume that math.py is better than our approximation, that this assertion that came from social media is not true to 42 billion digits whatsoever it's good till 11 um it's good till 11 digit 12 the 12th digit effectively so just something to um, note and also we could do for example the we could call it the error is equal to math dot pi and then subtract 
the that will actually be our difference we could take the absolute because it one of them will produce a that's fine we, we don't have to take the absolute this will produce a positive number but if we do this this so this was from pi by the way so this is pi over there and we can actually print out our error so just write error and run that we can see we can cut so like see our error message it is a tiny little error but nonetheless this is the level of accuracy so don't always believe everything that you see on social media but one thing that we were able to do in python very quickly into a high degree of accuracy is replicate a reasonably complicated formula relatively straightforward there'll be better methods maybe you could use numpy or memoizing or something else to get um, a slightly quicker function by all means post your comments in the comment section but if you did like this video if you found it useful then hit the thumbs up button the like and the follow and forward on to friends post on social media and so forth as well thank you for following